Hey guys, so a little update on the Shasta camper. So we were able to successfully finish the camper in time for camping at Lime Rock Park for the historic festival and Labor Day weekend. So that went great. Um, but to make that deadline, I had to go through registering it through like a tag agency um, because I don't know about your state, but Connecticut, since COVID, still does the appointment-only basis, which is actually a really good format, and I think that they should continue it. The only problem is that, um, like, any time of year, from what I've seen in my experience so far, is that it books, like, at least a week out um, in the summertime, depending on the location you're looking for in the branch. Um, it can book like two to like an entire month, two weeks to an entire month out um, for registration specifically. So again, there's a lot of variables, but um, we had tried to register it like the same week and I was like, okay, yeah, no, there's nothing open. So let me just pay a tag agency to do it. Um, and that was probably a mistake because here I am, I had to take the day off and come to DMV of Weathersfield to try to get the camper inspected. And so this whole process has kind of been not necessarily a nightmare. I think that that's a little bit strong, but it's been very unclear and I've tried to contact the DMV several different ways um and the unfortunate reality is that all of those ways are like essentially impossible and they do not care um so i'm just going to go through uh and share a little bit of my experience in hopes that if there was anyone else out there who was looking for this information like i was about a month to two months ago um maybe if you saw a video on it you would have done things differently and saved yourself paying someone to register your vehicle for you, for templates specifically, having to take an entire day off from work, and amongst all the other things I'm going to tell you um, that has happened. So I'm going to start with uh, this morning. So obviously I had someone else uh, register the camper. They only got me temporary plates. I asked them why or if there were compliance issues they did not know they could not give me this information um and this is actually a place that we use a lot for work so i'm really not to like say oh well i'm without fault because you know i should have known that this would be a risk yes but like we use this place all the time to register clients like classic vehicles um and anyone who knows buying out-of-state classic vehicles connecticut's not that bad but um, anytime you have one coming from a different state and then coming into a new state, there's always clerks that don't know what's going on and they don't know what to do. So that's always leery and the fact that we have this place tag all of those cars for our customers, I had a little bit more confidence in them. Um, but yeah, I was a little bit alarmed. They said I needed an inspection and I said, do I need a salvage inspection? Like, is that what this is? Are they, are they considering this a homemade trailer? They didn't know. I said, okay, so do I just go in the normal inspection lane? They didn't know. I've never been to DMV Weathersfield and had something inspected before, so I had no concept of how much these things matter. So I also couldn't find like any information on like the format, like what happens at DMV Weathersfield. So I'm happy to explain that for you guys too. The website makes it seem like there are all these specific lanes and stuff, and I'm going to tell you right now, when you go to DMV Weathersfield for inspections, I'm not talking about the actual branch of offices or anything like that. The inspection lane is, um, if you're coming from the west entrance, which is the only entrance I used, so um, that's the only one I can speak of, the west entrance is just like a massive parking lot. On one end, there's an employee parking lot, then there's the customer parking lot, and you cannot see the inspection lane from the west end at all. So like, we pulled up and I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, the inspection lane has this address, like, where is this? Um, and so the inspection lane like loops all the way around the building. You cannot see it from the west entrance. You just have to have a leap of faith and just like drive through a bunch of the parking lots until you start seeing the names for the signs. And then there's arrows that will guide you through. You get there, it's just a two bay little shop with um, 
you know, like tractor trailer sized doors on either end. So you just drive straight through. Um, there's two lanes and they're not even marked like this is the salvage lane and this is the general inspection lane. It's not, it's not like that in person. I don't know why the website makes it out to be that way. And if you're not in the proper lane, like it's severely detrimental. Like, no, it's very much people, everyday people who are here and they just take you in, in whichever lane you are. Now, granted, maybe in a busier time of year, that's a little bit differently, but there was no markers or indicators saying, this is one lane and this is the other. That was not the case. Um, so I pulled up and it took them quite a few minutes to um, get to us, but like that's with any DMV situation. Um, and we actually got really lucky. The, uh, I don't want to call him the clerk, but the DMV rep who we dealt with was very nice, very like person to person type of guy. Uh, a lot of times at the DMV, you don't get that human interaction. So that's always a bad sign. This guy was great. We were really polite. We were really patient. So he kind of asked me to explain what happened and why we were here. And I, you know, stomach sank, you know, my, my gut was like, okay, this is a bad question to start off with. Um, and the reason he had asked that Connecticut DMV website is horrible when it comes to trailers. There are so many different sub pages, um, and each of the different sub pages gives slightly different rules. So when you first Google like CTDMV like inspection for campers, um, it tells you that you need to print out this form and that all camper trailers need to be inspected. Now that is talking about camper trailers for camp grounds. And the only way they differ this from camper trailers is on the website, they are called camp, that's it, camp trailers. And then personal use camper trailers are noted as camper. This can be confusing because on your registration, it's only going to say camp. So that's area number one that I am not sure what went wrong with the tag agency trying to register my camper, but I think that that could have been an area of confusion because if you're looking on a reg and it doesn't differ camp or camper, they're gonna think they don't know what a Shasta looks like. They don't know what this is being used for. And all campground campers need to have an annual free inspection. So I knew that going into this and I was a bit concerned that, that would be the case. And there's a form that you print out and you present that upon the inspection, but like I didn't print it out because that would not have made any sense to do so because I'm not hauling around, you know, three to 10 year old kids in my camper. I'm using it to camp with. So I didn't print that out and I was gonna be prepared for that. Thankfully, the and it just so happened to be our luck, I guess. I don't know. Um, but the gentleman we had helping us in the inspection lane, he said, okay, so obviously I wasn't here when you guys had tried to have this registered, but here's what I've seen happen a lot. And here's what I think is going on. And of course I'm sitting here like, I know you guys have a computer in the shop here, and I know that you guys can look up all of this information as you need case by case. And I just wish that they will just look it up and verify. Because I know that there's got to be some type of information internally in the back end that says, this is what this registration needs. This is why this was given a temporary reg. Here are the compliance issues, if there are any. Ba ba ba. Why can't they just divulge that information I, I don't understand um so he said okay this is what I think is going on I've seen this quite a few times and I think you guys did everything right here so bear with me but he said honestly I don't think you guys should go through this inspection and I'm sitting here like Jesus Christ like we've spent like the last two to three weeks like trying to hustle trying to get this like as close to good as we can get it like there's a list of of, there's a checklist of what they check during the inspection online on the CTDMV website. I have this black folder 
okay, filled with all of that stuff, all of the checklists, okay, like, I highlighted everything, I highlighted stuff that was, like, areas of concern at some point that we got dialed and fixed, um, so, like, we had felt like we were ready to go, and he was like, look, like, between you and me, like, if I take out the pen and the paper, like, it's not gonna go well. And I'm like, what, what the heck? Like, what, what are we missing here that's, like, blatantly wrong? So he had expressed that the checklist online does not actually have every single thing on it that it should for inspecting trailers. And I think the reason being is that he has probably a separate list for homemade trailers, which is what we would need to fall into to get this inspected under this ruling. Because he expressed that the reason he believes we were flagged for an inspection is because they couldn't find the make Shasta. The reason they can't find the make Shasta is because at least in Connecticut, well, I think probably across every state because this is who makes Shasta's. Shasta is like a model name from um, Forest River. So if you go, if you Google Shasta and you click on the website and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, and this is exactly what the gentleman had said verbatim, so I knew that he wasn't blowing this out of thin air. At the very bottom of the Shasta website, it'll say, that it is like a product of Forest River. Forest River is on the Connecticut official manufacturer's list, meaning it's an approved camper that can be purchased and used and approved for registration. If a camper manufacturer is not on the approved list, then it has to go through the homemade trailer inspection program, which the homemade inspection trailer program is an $88 surcharge for the inspection, which I did not know about and no one had expressed to me because they didn't know what inspection I was going for or why. So thank God, because I mean, I didn't have cash. I mean, I'm sure they have a card reader in there, but I wasn't prepared for that. So thankfully, this guy respected us and the camper and had an appreciation for it and knows Shasta's, which how the heck we were the only camper there there was a few um imported like acties and stuff like that um there was a defender like a, a 90 defender which was pretty cool um and there was like a ford crown victoria like an early early one um that was there but aside from that no campers um so he said the problem with our registration is that when they went to register it, they probably didn't look through the list and realize that Shasta is like a subsidy of Forest River. So he told me I would be better off getting a VIN verification today um, just because the temp tags expire tomorrow. So get, get a VIN verification while it's still like road legal. Take the VIN verification and the temporary registration and make an appointment in person myself and make sure I explain to the clerk. And of course, this guy said, go to the less busy DMV locations, um, which is like ridiculous. So that should even be like something that someone internally says you're going to have a better chance at. That shouldn't be the case. But look, guys, we all know how this stuff goes. And we all know that every single DMV in every single state has its faults. Um, and we're all human, so, like, yeah, there's a human element that plays into it, but he had recommended try again with the reg registration, explain to the clerk what happened, because it's very, very likely that that is exactly what happened, which I believe now knowing what I know, because sure enough, I looked up on the Shasta website, and verbatim, he was correct. So, I essentially took a day off from work today which I'm going to try to do as a half day just to make up for some of my lost money here um, and time. So lost a day of work, already paid for someone to do registration. So I paid the fee and I paid the taxes and I paid for the temporary registration itself. Now that expires tomorrow. So uh, 
and the only the soonest I could book an appointment was and I chose a Saturday at this point so that I don't dip into you know taking off more time from work because I've taken off so much time from work already this year um so now I have an appointment for Saturday in an entire month so I'm going to have to pay I believe the taxes again because my temporary registration is going to be expired so I'll need to pay the taxes the registration again and I don't know that's if they do exactly what I need them to do at this point oh I need to pay for the VIN verification because he said that that would really help um but he he also affirmed he asked like where we bought this camper from I said look I, I bought it from a gentleman in Brantford Dudley Harrison this has been a, a, a camper that's been registered only in Connecticut since it's iteration being brand new i have the title from 67 i mean like it doesn't get more complete than that um and he said to me yeah like you should not need an inspection so i hope that this clarifies um some issues that some folks are having at least in connecticut and at least specifically for shastas um but if you have another vintage camper it's worth looking up the make um like Sarah Scotty I know is one is that the actual official name of the manufacturer license I have no idea um but it's worth googling if the make you have goes under that name for the manufacturer's license or if they use a different name um because I don't want to say that this was absolutely for nothing like Lee's going to register the high boy right now crossing my fingers that hopefully that goes okay because that was an out-of-state purchase and I think we should have all the paperwork for that um but you know I learned a little bit today shouldn't have needed to take off from work today some I put it this way I called the DMV three different times I emailed the DMV. Someone who emailed me back said, yeah, you shouldn't need an inspection, but like, I can't help you from here. Call the inspection lane. You call the inspection lane. It just rings like three times. And then it says, yeah, the mailbox is full and we can't help you. Sorry. So every single corner of communication is essentially null unless you have an appointment, which sucks because like, to have an appointment you need to take time off of work um so this was not the worst lesson to learn but definitely one that was really inconvenient um thankfully we had an appointment that we could schedule for registration the same day so hopefully you know the high boy registration works out um but yeah guys definitely double check all of this when you go to register your camper Depending on your state, you might still need to just go through an inspection anyways, but don't always trust the clerks know exactly what they're talking about because I got like four different types of answers over the past two weeks from all of these different people. Someone told me I needed an inspection no matter what, ma'am, like they got real sassy with me um, and they're wrong. So hopefully this guy is a little bit more accurate and hopefully with what he recommends I can get it registered if not I don't know what I'll do with this thing I guess just drive it around unregistered because you don't even need insurance on Connecticut roads because whatever is towing the trailer is what takes the collision um, costs which I find baffling but Anyways, guys, I hope that that little 20 minute story there has been of value to some of you guys that have any questions. Um, I'm not a paralegal and I don't know what any of other states do. So like, if you have any questions, try to find someone in your state that might know these things, but just a little bit of food for thought and things that are worth researching prior to you making the appointment and taking time off of work. Always cross your T's and dot your I's obviously i had a little bit more of a, a time frame that i got locked into because i wanted it to, to have temp tags for labor day weekend and then once i got the temp tags they expire after 20 days so i definitely should have had more time to research it but i kind of just fell into that trap and i kind of wanted to get it registered before having to repay for the taxes and all of that but you live and you learn and you can't always get it right the first time so yeah, hope that helps, guys. Best of luck.